not sure any of those are here yet. It's gonna, we're going to keep getting them like that. All right, I got five o'clock on my phone, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Start with routine business. The uh, Open Meetings app is posted on the Northwest wall, as always. And uh, Lisa, will you call the roll? Lance? Here. Brad? Yes. Sean? Here. Skyler, right back. All right, three out of four in the back. The gentleman in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next item is the consent agenda. As always, you can approve all items with one motion or deal with an individual. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Go ahead and call the roll. Brad. Yes. Sean. Aye. Van. Aye. Motion carried unanimous. All right. Item three is the mayor's report and appointments. Uh, I guess the only thing I'd mention is that on Monday I went to the care center and we had a proclamation recognizing National Skilled <coughs> Nursing Care Week. Had a few visitors there and uh, wanted to recognize the work all the nurses do for our community. Other than that, I do have some appointments to get caught up on, but not tonight. So we will. <laughs> Unless there's any questions, we'll move on. No public hearing tonight. Old business item five. Open. I guess many of you, while Lisa's grabbing those, I can update folks. We had a tie last week, or last month. The two top bids were the same. But uh, a week or so later, a gentleman came in and said, hey, why didn't you open my bid? And we found out that it had slipped into a spot, and so it wasn't included with the original bids. And he said that his bid was higher than the two bids that were tied. So if that's the case, we're going to open that. Lisa has contacted the two folks that were tied, so they understand what happened. They did submit additional bids in case that other bid does not exceed the <coughs> But if this bid exceeds the $1,200 we received last time, that will be the high bid. And yeah, we have a bid from Walter Larson in Springview for $2,552. So that is the high bid. And uh, E-N or Owen or Larson? What's that? E-N or Owen. Owen, oh, thank you. Larson. Owen. <coughs> and it was, that like was postmarked? It was dropped off. They, they all remember receiving it. It just happened to slip through their crack and was uh, overlooked the day of the meeting. And so, like I said, Lisa has followed up with everybody, and I think they're all understanding. So, who was the name on that? The bid? Who, who, who was it? Walter Larson from Spring. And uh, Lisa said they learn from that and they're going to implement a little different process of, you know, accepting bids in the future if we do have uh, more sealed bids that we do. So that everybody knows what came in and when. I think that one came in when you weren't here or something like that. Well, yeah, Somehow it got. Kind of receiving them in a lot of different ways and just, <coughs> we'll, we'll handle that better. We'll, we'll formalize that process if we do it again. <coughs> All right, and move on to discuss. We need, we need to make some motion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll make a motion to accept the bid from Walter Larson of uh, two thousand five hundred fifty-two dollars 
for the excess metal, surplus metal we have. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Go ahead and call roll. Sean? Yes. Vance? Aye. Brad? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Thanks for reminding me, Brad. <laughs> now we'll move on to consider a request by Tower Alliance LLC to extend the uh, tower site. So we tabled this from April. Um, we kind of try to talk to other communities and see what they might be getting that would be similar. Um, I really was only able to get feedback from two other communities. Um, none are quite like ours. Their situations are basically they lease uh, space on their water tower for an antenna. Um, Gretna was receiving $2,000 a month um, for theirs, and they were in the process of negotiating an additional $150 in a month to extend the lease with that company. And the city, I believe, of Utah was the other one was receiving $1,000 a month for the antenna placed on their water tower. That's the only comparable data that I have. So they're both on water towers and they're both in much more populated areas. I don't know how comparable or how that relates to ours. Well, they're all natural things that the city owns too, so it'd be a little different that way. If we can get it. So what they're getting, we can ask, but if we don't, then I can see it would be a difference where they own a natural structure versus here they're just leasing the space. The original was three fifty a month. Is what? Four four fifty is what we're getting currently. That's what we're for many years. Many years. How long is that? Too many years. Do you have any idea? How long? Uh, yes. When I look back, I think it was ever since what two thousand and ten, maybe or prior to that even. Mm -hmm. It's been quite a while. I think are about $160 a year. Anybody have an idea on a counter proposal, or do you think we should accept what they've offered? Or kind of off my head, it's $700 a month. That'd be pretty close to if there was a 3% kicker since that 2010. Seven in the shorter term. What they were asking for? How many years? Twenty-five or something. Twenty. Let's see. The way this reads is. Uh, was wasn't until twenty forty. That's the current. Horizon has asked sites under the expiration date of twenty forty to be extended. So that's what uh, we want to extend the current lease for seven additional five-year terms. So that we. Two 
two options. The first option was a signing bonus of $7,500. Rental payments and escalations and proportion effect to the extension. So they're really not offering any more money other than that $7,500. And then the second one was that perpetual easement for a lump sum of $50. But, you know, we're getting more. Like, so there's two issues really how much per year and then how much, how long. Over 15 years would have garnered $28,600. What would uh, raise it to uh, $700, 3% increase for 10 years? Do a 10 year extension from there. Yeah. 2040. Seven hundred keep up with inflation between now and then? Well yeah. Well, three percent something. Three percent. Assuming yeah, it's not eight percent every year. I mean that's kind of what they pretty close. Figure your average really. They didn't say a certain time, no. They were just they just shot at us and say, what do you think? It says if you have any counter to bring it to this Christy and she would take it to management and they see what they were willing to do. If they do want to extend the lease. Okay. You wanna make that counter proposal in the form of a motion, Brad, or anybody? Yes. Uh we didn't know for family, right? I'm okay with 700 in the 10 years, but I'm not, I'm not a lot of bankers, I don't know about I think, well, I think three percent, I think, would be probably close to a standard inflationary kicker. I mean, unless you tie it to it with the CPI or something. But I don't think we want to get terribly complicated with it. I guess I, w I would make a motion that we um, counter their offer with a $700 per month. 3% annual inflation escalator with uh, 10 years and extending the current lease for we kind of figure 10 years, Brad, yeah. so two additional five-year terms beyond the current, current lease. I'll second that. Okay. I'll motion Second, to extend the lease for 10 years, starting at 700 a month with a 3% annual increase, correct? Any other discussion? That 700 would only kick in for that 
two five year periods, you're already locked in up until that <coughs> time frame. So, <coughs> so none of this would start until 2040, is what you're saying. Change your motion, and you already have second, so you're going to have to either. Because I moved to amend the motion to uh, make those changes effective the first day after of the month following the signing of the new contract. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. So we got a motion, a second, an amendment, and a second. <laughs> yeah, so we've got an amendment pending on the motion. Now. Assuming with your both have a second with one draw. I think you under arbitrarily you can amend the motion as long as the person who seconded the motion agrees to the Well, then it's just basically holding the motion where that's been moved and seconded, and then they move to pass the amendment to the original motion and the motion and potential amendment. Whatever Robert Lewis says. <laughs> Everybody clear that we're starting as soon as it would be signed and be effective. If it's well, we need a vote on the amendment. Vote on the amendment. A vote on the amendment first. Okay. So call the roll on the amendment. Everybody clear now? We're back to the original as amended. Go ahead and call the roll. Frank. Yes. Sean. Yes. Okay. Aye. Very good. We muddled through that one. I think that's good. We'll see. We probably yeah. aren't going to want to accept that <laughs> right away, but draw the starting point. All right, we'll move on to the regular agenda, item six. And the first item there is to consider the recommendation by the LD840 Loan Committee regarding application number 22-01, a facade grant in the amount of $4,761. This is a facade application by a business off of Second Street, so not necessarily downtown, but um, kind of on the business corridor for window replacement. 
couple of windows in the back, but the loan committee had, uh, in their discussion, surmised that uh, because the windows were visible from 2nd Street, that it met the definition of the I feel once again we're up against that change in rules just a little bit. Uh, I, the facade is the front. So we, we talked about a couple of different instances where there was some gray. We had one business on 2nd Street just off of Main where in the application there was stuccoing and paint and that was visible from Main Street. And so they allowed that to be part of the application. When was that done, Lisa? Fall. I was going to say just this last fall. And then another one that we approved that was originally the front and when the contractor got into it, the foundation was not uh, good enough to support the new windows, and so they ended up having to go around the corner to beef up the foundation, and we allowed that amended application to come through. So those were the those were the other things that they do when they come to that conclusion. So in those two cases they would have actually been tied to the work being done. Yeah, that's where I see this one being a little different, than, particularly in the second one you mentioned, it was almost necessary to do the work for what was um, the first one was a little bit more connected than this one, but not quite as much as the second one reference. But this one seems fairly separate. I drove by and looked at it the other day, and I mean, you can sort of see those windows from the street. They do not face the street. I'm going to make a motion to approve only the facade improvements to the front of the building in an amount of three thousand seven hundred eighty-three dollars and seven cents. Three thousand seven hundred eighty-three dollars and seven cents. Second. Motion and second. Any other discussion? Call the roll. Brian. Yes. Sean. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. And that was for who? H and R Foods. Okay. And I think that was a good call for my my opinion for what it's worth. All right, move on to the next item is to consider an administrative subdivision of part of the south half second southeast quarter of section 24 township 30 north range 22 west of the sixth prime meridian in brown county Nebraska, a tract of 0 0.708 acres for casey jones i see casey's here so maybe i'll let him speak to it virtually what it is was <clears throat> 21 years ago when i bought the, my body shop east of town i bought it no survey was done at that time. We recently surveyed it, found out 14 feet of the east side was on wolf ground, 11 feet was on blue ground. That's a correction to get the building with the land underneath of it in that tract. Just virtually what that's doing. Okay. So you have a couple of different survey plans here. To the one dated 2022-043 at the bottom is the current one. Yeah, that's the one to make it the 0.7. Oh, it's the 0.44 plus the 0.21 and then whatever that so 30 feet was. So if you approve this, that's what, that's what the boundary would look like. Yes. Which that leaves five acres left that we bought from Wolves. That's how we come up with those numbers to leave five acres. Because it was 5.44 we purchased from Wolves to correct. But this property will be that 0.44 and the existing 2-1 and then the, the north boundary for the loops. Does this make you and all the neighbors happy? 
Yeah, I mean, we jumped through all the hoops and it took a year to get Betty because she's bored and has nothing to do with complain. <laughs> Love the lady to death. She's like a second mom that said she retired. My stuff's the problem, but her son's stuff is not. Uh, it just seems like it's getting the lines a little bit more in the property and venues. So, just with that, I would move to approve the administrative subdivision as part of the south half of the southeast border of section 24, township 30 north, range 22, west of the 6th <coughs> principal meridian, Brown County, Nebraska, at point seven zero. Second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? Go ahead and call the roll. Brad. Yes. Sean. Yes. Thank you. Motion carried unanimous. All right. Uh, we're going to move on to the next item is to discuss and consider amending the interlocal agreement between Ainsworth and Brown County Forming the Care Center to create a separate legal entity. And, uh, this is a result of a joint meeting we held about a month ago, I guess, and uh, since then the county commissioners have met, and Andy's here, buddy's here too, but Andy, do you want to address? Anything? Basically, we discussed um, redoing the interlocal agreement just to streamline things, and because of the fact that the funding provided um, in the interlocal agreement uh, does not meet the needs of the care center as well. Um, so we had drafted that up, a uh, resolution for the commissioner to sign last week. Our commissioners had some issues as to how the funding would actually be put into place. Um, I don't know, Buddy was there, I don't know if you can explain sort of what the commissioner's concerns were about the funding. The commissioner's concerns are that if it was put on a levy for the county, it would put the greatest financial burden on the rural taxpayers in the county. And it wouldn't be a 50-50 deal with the city, which is what we, we originally set up some years in the past. Andy just mentioned that it's, it's becoming less and less um, possible to keep the nursing home in operation uh, Sean Furno and Penny Jacobs, the administrator, met last Monday, I believe. Yeah, Monday. And then uh, Sean presented a plan to the Care Center Board this past Monday. Uh, you probably all read it or heard it on the radio. Uh, increase uh, hourly rates by 30% and try to attract some uh, professional people. We're always short of registered nurses, licensed practical nurses, and certified nursing assistants. Right now, unless it's changed within the last two days, the old has it changed? It has. Uh, okay, Phil, tell, Phil, tell mentioned us about it. Phil mentioned at a meeting earlier today that just since Monday they've had enough applications to where they basically think they can fill the CNA. Okay. Positions just just, just the CNA, them. but with the wage increases, they they mentioned at the previous meeting we were attending okay. that said they've had. I don't know if they're all hired yet, but they've had applications that would that I was aware fill of. Those, they had apps, yeah. yeah that they, they would actually fill hired those. one today. Okay. okay. And the way I understood it is, they possibly may may have filled three of the four positions. One for sure, possibly two. CNA <coughs> positions. Yes. Unfortunately, everybody. We need registered nurses and licensed practical nurses to fully staff the facility. I've got some numbers here in front of me. They're rather alarming. Uh, Sean's aware of them. In the month of January this year, <clears throat> the care center paid out $87,185.85 for agency nurses. In February, that figure was $114,217.98. In March, it was $149,039.67. And in April, it was $157,054.81.
That's a grand total of just four months of this calendar year of $507,498.31. It's not sustainable. Uh, we can't, but we haven't been successful in hiring that type of help. We've even had trouble hiring uh, kitchen people and, and uh, custodial people. We have them now, but it's difficult to even hire them. So if we have to continue hiring uh, nurses through agencies, the care center will be broke in three months. Well, the other disturbing part of that is all those wages are, you know, a lot of dollars. But they're all leaving our community. So that wage is not being spent back in our community right. to grow our to keep our community growing. It's all leaving. That's another fact. Yes. And the interlocal agreement, I believe, only calls for an eighty thousand dollar contribution from, from the city entity. and from the county. And obviously, with those kind of numbers, eighty thousand from each is not enough to keep this thing afloat. Not even so, a month. Right. There's so the if, we to redo, for one. if we're going to keep it open, we need to redo the interlocal agreement and figure out how to do that. I think the commissioners are sort of um, kind of wanting to see what the city might want to do or how they would want to address that. Did they have any ideas? <laughs> if I may speak. Mr. Mayor, sure. the board, the, the care center board, doesn't want to get to the point where we're, we're at the very end and then make the terrible announcement that we're closing. We want to be able to give people, if, it, if it's necessary to close the facility, we want to give people some time to prepare for that event. None of us want to do it. Uh, we just, at this point, we can't see how we can how we can finance it, not with these expenses. And I'd like to, if I may, uh, give this these stats as well. Uh, as of Monday night, we have 20 residents in the in the in the care center here. Uh, seven are from the city of Ainsworth, two are from the city of Long Pine. Johnstown has none. Rural Brown County has four. And residents from outside of Brown County totals seven. So we're looking at 13 Brown County residents in that facility and seven who are not from Brown County. Buddy, do you know on those um, seven, uh, of those seven that are, are not from Brown County, how many are private pay and how many are not private pay? That I don't know. I truly don't. Do you know, Sean? No, no I don't. Buddy, what effort has it been made uh, to, I know there's been a number of nursing homes across the state that have closed. I would think that those people have to go somewhere. What effort have we made to contact each one of their families or each one of them to try to get them to come here? I would say, Rod, that um, the staff out at the care center has done everything they could to reach out to Is these. Is that what they, have they done that? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, they have, they have attempted to um, recruit residents from these other facilities as well as professional um, people to come to Ainsworth and there's been some success. If I remember right through those meetings there were two or three that came when Valentine's closed. I think but, it's two but yeah, yeah. yeah but their, their staff was like almost a hundred percent agency so there were no employees. Right to bring in when Valentine closed because they were in the same boat and running agency. When Mullen closed, I believe they brought in, they're getting an LPN and a CNA from that facility to add to the full-time workforce. And did you say, was there was it one resident that they said they were getting from Mullen? I don't recall. I don't remember. Greg, I, I don't remember. Last month. Yeah, I believe it was maybe one. Minimal person. numbers in that yes, case. Yeah. You know, the, the agencies are killing nursing homes. That's the way it is. My opinion on this deal is, is I understand that we're elected to make decisions for the people and everything. However, I think this, I think we need to find a way to keep it afloat until we can have a vote because I believe the citizens got to make this call. I don't believe this can be put on a board. How many months of operating do you have currently? Operating funds? About three. <coughs> so three months as in July, August. So then, a 
I guess my my concern from a treasury type standpoint is we we will already have been given our eighty. The county's already given the eighty. Is that three months including the hundred and sixty? So okay, so the city and the county put in eighty, which is what we budgeted for. Yep. So then you've got October, September, October, November. Um, you know, until it goes to ballot, and then it, if it passes, if it doesn't pass, um, you've still got probably by permit or by state three months to relocate. So the city and the county are sitting here looking at six months at least of floating this thing 100% um, with what money? Exactly, with what money? We haven't budgeted it. I don't that you budgeted it for us. So we budgeted 80, and, and the, the, the 80,000 that the county budgeted for this year was, was deposited this past Monday. Did I read somewhere there was like 113,000 going to be put into that, and only 6,000 left for emergency funds? Is that, that was before the that 80 was from before the county and before the 80 from the city. city. So yes. If there's only 6,000 left, there's no rainy day money. Uh, so that three months, well, I guess what is your operating loss per month? Currently, with the, what's that? What's the April, April was eighty-five thousand. Yeah, eighty-five. I should have brought those. Well, but you're stats just shy of thirty thousand a month. Then is that? You get eighty-five over two months. No, eighty-five thousand was the loss per in eight per month. Per month. Per month. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just and it was probably a little less than that, but similar in March. Yeah. Uh, they're hoping that with the increased raises. And the new applications that they'll be able to cut down on the expense of using the agency nurses, and so that loss will hopefully go down over the next several months as we are not having to pay the agencies. Um, but that's something that's not proven. We'll have to see how that works out over the well, next month or two. There's still three no positions loss. in three days tells me that it's going to be a loss. Yeah. Three positions in three days. We haven't been able to fill three positions in three months yeah. until this started. Mm -hmm. So we cut that in half to forty thousand. But so if it passes, six months we've got the, the people spoke. So that's we got to find a way. If it passes, <laughs> the citizens spoke who we represent. We've got to get to the point where we've got to get to that election somehow. We owe it to the to the people, in my opinion. And if they speak and, and the vote comes through and, and it passes to levy this, in my opinion, that's what the people who elected us spoke. It's a serious enough issue, it probably should go to a vote. But right. it's a lot more palatable to if we can find a way to fund it after mm -hmm. that vote to get to that time. But it's the time between, you know, if it goes and fails, then that's the tough part. But well, then I mean, agree, it's to the point it probably needs to get to the vote. So the numbers were, for instance, if they fill the four CNA positions that are currently agency, the savings in paying, even at the increased wage, compared to what they're paying agency, you would cut $20,000 per month off the bottom line just for the CNA positions. Now that doesn't address the LPNs or RNs, but just filling the CNA positions would shave, and that's accounting for paying those positions, it would shave $20,000 off that, off what they're, you know, off the difference per month. And that money goes back to the community instead of down the road. But you're still, if your numbers are similar to where they are now, you're still going to be in a fifty to sixty thousand a month deficit. And just some things to consider for the city council side. When you're budgeted for those expenses and you make them, and they alter your bottom line significantly enough, that requires an amendment to your budget, which is public hearings, uh, motions that have to be filed. Not that it can't be done. It's just there's there's other processes and things. And then to get that money <coughs> other services. Which in our case has always been streets. Does the election have to wait till November? Why? I mean if, if you're losing eighty five sixty to eighty five thousand dollars a month, can't you have it in three months? So maybe you have it at the end of July or something like that. I realize the election 
isn't a cheap thing, and it'd be cheaper to wait till November. But how much is sixty-five thousand dollars a month cost, or eighty-five thousand? We actually had uh, Travi Hobbs at the last couple of meetings, the election commissioner, and based on the research she and I did, you have to have this presented to her a certain number of days before the special election. You can only have special elections at certain times of the year. The only way this is going to work is if everybody had the uh, decision in place by May 23rd. So it was going to step on the gas and it was done ASAP. That's one of the reasons we're making the rounds right now to see if that's something that you guys want to do. That would put it on which? That put it, that put it, if you want to have a special election, you have to have that um, vote, whatever the issue is going to be, the ballot issue, whatever it's going to be, it has to be to Travi Hobbs and filed with her by May 23rd. I believe Vance, that would put it in August, <coughs> put it in August for an election. And that's the only time you could do it before the special, before the general election in November. So basically, if you want to have a special election, it's possible, but everyone's going to have to move very fast. Well, one of the other things that's brought up at that meeting was the attendance of the election. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's hard to get them to November, let alone a special election. So that was one of the reasons also. I know. <laughs> I kind of had a thought. What about, uh, you know, if we were to orchestrate a town hall meeting, obviously I've, I've heard from people that people don't show up and everything else, but I know personally that I could go to 15 different people who I, you know, trust and everything else and guarantee that they would come there. I mean, if we can at least get a town hall meeting where we can get as many people as we can. I mean, obviously they don't show up, they don't care. Or they have another reason, but we could get a grasp on kind of what the voting outcome is going to look like before we even try to get a special election, which we don't have a lot of time for, obviously. I'd be very surprised if we're able to get a special election done in the time that we have, because there are, there are also requirements in the law that you have to do a survey, you have to have petitions circulated, there's all kinds of things you have to do before you can set a special election, and all of that would have to be done before May 23rd. So basically, Travi's position was that it's very unlikely, and I would agree with that. And Andy, that was under the guise that, I mean, if, right now, if you did a special election the way it's structured, this it would be a vote of the city and a vote of the, and county. A vote of the county because. The, a legal entity doesn't get created overnight to right. do that. I mean, you're talking 60 days probably, at minimum, to get a to get a legal entity that. through. Yeah. Yeah. And special election, if it, if it could work, would be a great idea, but I just don't think it's going to be feasible from the discussions we've had. So the real issue is, is there a way to float this thing until November? That is, you know, I think that goes back to the discussion at the April meeting. That's why we right. didn't talk about a special election. That's right. I said it was better to go to November. What form of legal entity were you talking about or thinking about? We're just talking about creating, uh, basically under the Interlocal Cooperation Act, we're allowed to create either a legal entity or a non-legal entity, a separate legal entity. So that would be up to the commissioners and the city council to determine what kind of entity they want to set up. I mean, that's something else you guys have to discuss on that. But the Interlocal Corporation Act does allow you to set up whatever is created by that act as a separate legal entity or as a non-separate legal entity. And right now, our care center is a non-separate legal entity, which means the power rests with the city and the county. If you create it as its own separate legal entity, the power would rest with the board of the care center. And they'd be the ones responsible for it. Which would probably be composed of both the counties. Which certainly could be composed. That's how the board wanted to do it. But it'd be based on their bylaws then. But could it, make could it be an LLC? If so, that would be my suggestion. Well, those can be formed. It doesn't take 60 days for them. You can no. do that overnight. But can as we soon as it hits the Secretary of State's... Right, but the point being that there's so many other things we have to do before May 23rd, no. it's not going to happen, I don't think. Even if, we, even if you guys decided to sign something tonight, creating or, or giving your approval to amending the interlocal agreement, and the Commission has had a special meeting tomorrow, and they signed it, Great, we've got this change now as a separate legal entity, but we still don't have the petitions, we don't have the surveys, we don't have all the other kind of stuff that has to be done before you even schedule a special election. So as, as we were saying, the earlier meeting that was kind of tossed out as an idea that wasn't going to fly. Informing that special new entity in no way dictated how dictates how they would go about uh, procuring the funding, whether they did a, a bond issue or whatever. 
It's just assumed that they would would go that direction, right? Absolutely. But really, they'd be their own entity. They could right. make their own decisions on what they, how That's they thought they could best right. accomplish the goal. They'd still have the fiduciary responsibility, but yes, yeah. based on that, they could make their own decisions. Which is where I thought we were going a month ago. That's kind of what we're planning on doing. To get rid of the red tape so yeah. that that board could do it. And, and then the commissioners last week, though, I believe said that they were concerned about how that would work out. That if the care center board then said, well, we're going to do a, uh, just a levy across the county, that the rural <coughs> residents would then end up paying more. So they want something in place. My understanding, at least from the, the commissioners there, the ones the other ones, is that they want some kind of agreement or something in place saying this is how the funding will be raised by that uh, care center entity. So then there's no point in creating that entity, in my mind. Not a, exactly, not unless there's some kind of agreement as to how we're going to do this, and I don't know how we're going to work that out ahead of time. <clears throat> to keep the care center viable, uh, it would cost the city of Ainsworth and Brown County somewhere between a half a million dollars and a million dollars apiece per year. To keep it open for a year. Which is the point I was trying to drive to. And I, I, I heard that, where yeah. Nobody's budgeted for that. Nobody has that. Are you going to take on debt to make that commitment? At one time, uh, Brown County was somewhat flush with funds. Uh, in the inheritance fund, we had about $2 million. Then we got hit with the floods. That got eaten up really fast. It is being replenished a little bit at a time, but it won't get back to $2 million. And right now, it's some. Um, Quite low. We had some, and then put out more money. We got the bridge coming up on Sandra. Uh, that's going to take several hundred thousand dollars of Brown County money. We just had a bridge um, rebuilt, not rebuilt, a new bridge, a bridge was replaced for 130 or something like that. Uh, there's a repair coming up just under 40. And that money goes fast, so the county doesn't have money in reserve either. Not to finance this kind of a project. Yeah, I understand. I understand what you're saying, Sean. I agree. But on the other hand, the the opportunity may have passed. It maybe should have happened last year. What would the if the levy, levy did pass? What kind of money are we talking about generating? And then what you'd ask for is just say, uh, what was, yeah, yeah. double talk to ask for what was it like six cents? Six to eight probably I, think I mean they, I visited with one of the commissioners the other day we were thinking really yeah. What did you just say? Eight Please. potentially huh? even up to eight. Because you don't know and you don't you, exactly. you can't be short, you know, because and the you know, city and the county aren't budgeting. If both entities approve this kind of money. It might not keep the place open for more than six months. This this agency stuff is just bleeding us, bleeding the care center, not us in particular. But <clears throat> very disturbing. I see the truck going down into the hospitals and stuff like that. The EDCs and stuff. So it's, not, it's not long term care. It's has there been a determination where all these people are going on all these closed nursing homes? Where where did they, they go on? Have they just been absorbed into other ones around here and there? Yeah. 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 Unless they're going back home and having family members care for them or home mm -hmm. health. Sean, or, what's, what's the max you could have out there? 46 is the last one. But you yeah, don't I have the staff. You don't have the staff. Right now they're basically at max, right? With the, you know, you're without hiring more staff. Agency, I'm sure. Yeah. But you only said that by hiring three CNAs, you're going to save $20,000 a month. But if you go from 17 or 18 residents or even 20 residents down to 17 residents, that eats up your, your savings right there. Just off, you know. That's what we're going to be. Well, and I've got to tell you, based off you know, based off Monday's board meeting conversation, I know there are already families that are that are trying to make other arrangements, just you know, trying to get out in front of what they see as the potential 
of it closing, closing. So it, you know, it may be a self-fulfilling prophecy where we're worried about it closing, and those family members say, "Oh my, we've got to, we've got to make other arrangements before it gets to that." Because a lot of people remember 2014 when the <coughs> private management company just pulled out and left the residence and the staff there without a paycheck and they went into receivership and the community had to step forward and at least help to pay the staff that was there caring for people without without getting paid so i think family members seeing that say well we don't want to see that again so you you know don't be surprised if you start seeing that census start tracking down if, if some of the families that have members out there start to start to find other options while we're still, I mean, even while we're still debating or figuring out how to how to get there, and the decision may get made for you by those families. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I guess I have a suggestion. If you guys, I, I don't think we want to take any action. I don't think we can take any action. I would, I would suggest that perhaps the. Care Center Board, the County Board, and the City Council should, should meet fairly soon and uh, talk real numbers. And I know the, the if I may speak, um, the Care Center Board last meeting, I believe they said that uh, they're going to kind of take a look at how things were at the June meeting and try to probably make a decision there as to how we been able to do enough that we're trending in the right direction and we think we can scrape by on this or did it not work and we just need to go ahead and just help people we're shutting down. So I think basically they'll have more information after that. I think it's June 13th meeting or something around there. Or maybe June 15th, I'm not sure. Does that make sense to you guys? Does that make sense to you, buddy? It would be the 13th, by the way. When the, when the care center board meets again. Right. Special meetings certainly one of them. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. okay everybody all right to move on? Any big more for that? I don't think we have to take any There's no action made. Okay. All right, thanks. Good discussion, tough discussion, but they're not all easy. Uh, we're going to jump ahead here for one item just to make sure we're still doing pretty good. But let's do this one anyway. Move down with us to discuss and consider the CDGG DR infrastructure match for public assistance uh, pre application. We got something there? Sure. So, there's, as I understand it, there was some federal dollars that came down through infrastructure. Trickling its way down to, uh, to the state to make actual applications. So this is actually from the flooding in 2019. Um, it was the FEMA Federal Disaster 4420, which of course we applied for funding and received funding. Uh, we received funding. We're supposed to receive funding. We have requested our reimbursements, but have not. But under FEMA and NEMA's uh, funding for that uh, disaster, the city was left with a 5% match of the total project cost. And so my understanding is this would be funding that could help us with that 5% match. Of course, we've already expended all of these funds, but so I think it would be a reimbursement for some of that 5% match. And this is a pre application it's due June 10th, and basically this lets DED and you know what the interest is in terms of how much money they have, and then, and then following that, we would actually then make a formal application. So I guess what I'm looking for from the city council is if you would authorize uh, me to make this free application to the state. This is different, Lisa, than just your regular hazard mitigation dollars, and this is a separate program. It's a separate CDBG community development block grant. Um, that's going to be administered through DDP, is my understanding. But it's all tied to the uh, 2019 application. Somebody want to make a motion to authorize? 
Discussing and consider the land lease agreement with Three River, Three River Digital LLC. Um, so the subcommittee, which you know was negotiating the franchise, um, met again. You know, that was Vance and Skyler to, um, to discuss the land lease, which is the other portion of the agreements that had expired with Three River. Um, basically, what we did is we took the existing land lease that was already in place. Changed the dates obviously and added in. Uh, the, the old lease said uh, free internet at its highest speed, I think, to the city office, the library, and the fire hall. We updated that to include the uh, street department, the water department, the wastewater treatment plant as well. Um, we presented it to Three River, kind of thinking that perhaps there might be a little bit of a negotiation, but they agreed to it and have signed it. So, providing that the rest of the city council. Is okay with the agreement. Uh, if we would motion to approve, then it would be finished. So I move to approve the lease agreement with the River Digital Cable LLC. Second. Motion on the second. Any discussion? Free internet to the city library, fire hall, street department, water department. Wastewater treatment plant. Wastewater treatment. <coughs> Call the roll. Vance. Aye. Brad. Yes. Sean. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. All right. Next item is to consider resolution number 22 04, providing for the designation of a detour route for the closing of Main Street for the Chamber of Commerce's annual Carnival Days event and setting aside portions of streets for the prohibition of vehicle parking during the detour and designating a time limit for such detour and parking prohibition. Uh, the, the route that is being proposed is uh, in south to Ulrich and to the highway. It's a little different than in the past. This is. Uh, Obviously, we got some things going on <laughs> Highway 20 here. Uh, it was looked at by the, the sheriff and the street department. They felt that for a short-term uh, short detour, that would be uh, doable and would avoid a lot of a lot of hassles here in town. So that's the proposal. You got anything else to add, Kevin? The Carmel Rounds and Ulrich is just past what they're working, right? I think it's just west of yeah. where they're actually tearing up. And they said that they could work with the, the pylons and stuff during that period just to make sure trucks can turn. Construction company said that. Highway department, state of the rest. I realize I have a typo on my resolution, so if you do decide to adapt it as is, please, uh, in your motion, include the amendment from June 19th to June 9th. Chris, yes, if you guys have sat around the detour that way, I actually live on our street, and I know it's supposed to 25 mile an hour. I live on that street, too. Nobody drives 25 mile an hour. Mm -hmm. Could you put up additional Speed bump signs. What is the sign right there? The trailer. <laughs> speed bumps or something. <laughs> something. It's uh. Well, my daughter's dog got hit the other day, and the guy that hit the dog was probably at 45 mile an hour. He was two and a half blocks away before he got stopped. 
I mean, it's pretty crazy. Actually, I think the county <coughs> part of them signed. I mean, okay, they put the ones up that's been out there forever. So okay. Um, I don't know. How to I, I know that we've never replaced them as county, yeah. but um, we've straightened them up several times. We have. <laughs> They tend to bend them a little bit. Yeah, I, I would definitely say that uh, that that's probably one of the worst streets in town for people speeding. I mean, we, my daughters have lost two cats on that road, you know, right along with your dog. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think we could at least talk to the uh, sheriff's department and maybe maybe have a little more presence there, and certainly during the detour, have more presence if it's going to be great. increasing mm -hmm. traffic. I think they would be happy to do that. Tell them it's a good spot for a speed trap. <laughs> hey, they can use my driveway. <laughs> yeah, they can't do much sitting in the old purple dipper building anymore. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> they have pretty easy, it's actually pretty easy to get over the center line right now. <laughs> I have a question. That's okay, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Um, on this resolution here, uh, now this would just be a temporary one time, and if they were to reuse this for the parking, it would have to be reapproved again. This would just be a standing. This is just correct? one time. Based on current conditions. Okay. Any other questions? Concerns? Appreciate the comments. Anybody like this? <laughs> Nobody's going to like it in front of their house. Yeah. So. Three days. Free carnival tickets, then. So people live on the street. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 22-04 for the detour for carnival days from June 9th through June 13th. Any other discussion? Uh, Call roll. Brad. Yes. Sean. No. Vance. Aye. Motion carried two to one. I just carnival, so it's, of course it's going to storm one of those nights, and then that's going to get a little sloppy down the road. I'm gonna. I'm excited to see what we do at the carnival detour when we get to the highway seven project. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think a park lot back here is big enough. <laughs> I'm guessing you won't get approval to have the carnival on Highway 20. <laughs> you don't think they'll walk off 20 for us? Yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be another thing to figure out. All right. Honestly, if there's a big enough part of the one, it's probably just going to be part or something. That is correct. Or that too. Or that Sure, that might work with you. If it's the same company, though, they're going to go from Highway 20 out to the Cottonwood Villa and be tearing it all up at one time. If you look at Highway 20. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now we'll move on to the next item and consider resolution number 22-05, providing for the placement of temporary stop signs along the street carrying the Highway 20 construction. And this has come about, there was... I think the first day they started work, there was a couple of calls to the office about traffic on 5th Street, people avoiding. Uh, haven't been any calls since then, apparently. So, but it's a it's a safety consideration, open for discussion. Uh, I've traveled that street quite often since the construction and stuff, and many many times I've been the only vehicle on that street. I think maybe maybe the first couple of days there probably was just until people got um, decided on how to get through town with the construction and maybe found 
these were routes to go. They'll watch you almost come to a stop anyway at most of those intersections due to the, the bump. Yeah. If you don't, you're going to tear the bottom. Yeah, I was going to say the stop signs might be good just to save people's ground effects on their vehicles from getting torn off. I say the same thing. I've been down it several times. I've been the only one on there. Me too. <coughs> uh, so each stop is sign just to, uh, to know what the cost is is about $70. That's just for the sign itself. If, if, if we approve the resolution, it would cost us between seven and eight hundred dollars to place them. There's been no calls though. It's not like the city, the residents are demanding it or anything. It's uh, just early on, we had just that handful that. Nonsense. Which is why you know why we pursued it. I guess what I would do is I'd make a motion to table this to further discussion if we get um, further calls or further complaints about it. So it's still there. Second. Motion and second to table. Any discussion? Call the motion. Yes. Sean? Yes. Thanks. All right. Motion carried to table. Yep, we can keep an eye on it and see. All right, next item, discuss and consider the street shop building repairs, framework, contracting, and construction LLC. Corey's here. I don't know if you want to start off with anything or something. Sure. Um, basically, I just want to make a few statements. Um, just kind of go over some brief things that, um, so if I may, <coughs> um, we can all agree that we had a water leak after I finished the street building. Um, we, right? <laughs> okay. Um, I went back a few different times, not a few, several times during a rain. Um, we've got a water hose up there trying to find where it's coming from. You know, if we can pinpoint it to no avail, we could not find it. Um, Shortly after that, um, I received a phone call saying, hey, um, don't try to make any more attempts to fix it, okay? And so I didn't. Um, in a meeting after that with the city council, um, Bramer Contracting and Construction offered to replace the whole roof the whole roof system. New steel, new insulation, all brand new to re remedy the problem. <clears throat> and meet all Balin building specifications and offer to do it for free at no cost to the city. I think we can all remember that conversation. Um, I believe it was tabled at that time to discuss amongst the city council. And I was, they would, you guys would let me know on a decision that was made. The decision was made by the city council to have it fixed by a different party and was it let out for additional bids at that time. The total cost of repairs was $112,354.50. At least that's what I read in the paper. The city council made that decision to spend said amount of money after I offered to do the repairs for free and at no cost to the city. The point of me uh, addressing these facts is to make sure the citizens of Ainsworth know that Bremer Contracting, we stand behind our work. And I offered to do so for free at no cost to the taxpayers of the city. But I was not given that opportunity to, uh, on the city building project. I was not given the opportunity to stand behind my work and fix it for free per decision by the city council. That's all I got. Um, I do remember that, that meeting and stuff. And 
from the report from Balin is about there were more issues than just the, the ceiling, the roof, and the insulation. There was the walls where some of the tin had multiple holes in it and they were patched and they recommended us that those all need to be replaced. And you say, well, that's just cosmetic, they don't need to be replaced. But we were going off of what um, Balin was saying that the walls as well needed to be replaced. And all you wanted to do was just do the, the insulation and the ceiling. Because that's where the roof was. That's where the leak was. And um, no, I didn't, I really don't want to get into a big discussion about this. Um, might take a while. Okay. Uh, but as far as there any other, any further discussion, <coughs> um, can we, we can handle it at a later time. Yeah. Um, but here again, I need to reiterate that the citizens know that I did not back away from this. I offered. Because it will, I mean, if, if, if the community thinks that I'm not going to stand behind my word, I'm dead in the water, folks. And I always have. Regardless if it was just a leak on the ceiling, or if Balin said, hey, you know, you've got to replace a few panels because we got some, you know, a missed screw or whatever in the case it may have been. Sure. But I was denied that opportunity. So therefore, any other discussion, further discussion, we can have it at a further time. Um, please contact me if, with anything. Okay. Okay. Appreciate you coming in, Brian. You bet. I understand. It's, it's a tough deal, and I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, like Brad said, there was, the, the report we had had a variety of items on it. So, uh, maybe a little disagreement, but life's full of disagreements. So we'll work through it. And appreciate you coming and making a statement. Thank you for having me. Yeah, anytime. Uh, Thank you. I don't think there's any action to take there. So we'll move on to. Oh, now. Now's the good stuff. Discuss potential amendments to ordinances regarding culture. Um, I don't know. I know Lance asked this to be on the agenda. Yeah, I can start off. I was the one who was supposed to be on the agenda. Shocker, I know. <laughs> Uh, and obviously the Facebook deal, but it's been something, and even I talked with Skyler, which was a, a thought of getting it. That there's enough communities similar to us that are, have similar ordinances that allow for poultry within a certain limit of, you know, whether that's space or number or time. Uh, even Lincoln, Omaha type communities have it. I think we can at least keep up with, with our urban areas in terms of you know, ag-friendly, self-reliant policies um, within reason. Uh, now, over the last month, you see people getting into the police report and things like that for them. So I think, yeah, it was a long agenda, but I thought now was the time to at least get the ball rolling, particularly where we're uh, looking and revamping our ordinance book. Just if we want to make a change, I think now's the time to get it so it's clean, it's in that book, and official moving forward to be a part of the city code. That being said, uh, for those individuals that have had poultry within city limits, just disregarding ordinance is not the way to go about it. There's a very simple process to get things changed. We might not always be the easiest to work with or most pleasant, but uh, something like that. There's a, there's a form you can fill out, get it on the agenda. We've got a lot of involved citizens that come to meetings and, and discuss things and bring up inspiration. <coughs> Just skirting the ordinance is not the proper way. So I think we can come to some sort of an agreement as far as types and kinds and numbers and um, try to get people on the same thing that's palatable for everyone and not be too much of a service for neighbors. So um, that being said, we can hear some more discussion. Uh, 
issue is current ordinance a complete ban? Because we've had this Correct. discussion several years ago with people that had come in yeah. on wanting or either had poultry at the time or wanted poultry. It's 3-301. No poultry or fowl. No poultry or fowl is the current ordinance. That's been since who plugged the rock. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, it's not, it, it, I, it stuck in my mind that you were allowed like three or something like that. that that's pretty standard. I think it and was the people wanted more. Ago. Uh, 2014, uh, I looked up the old uh, minutes today, and because I remembered the discussion about it, and it was kind of controversial, but uh, it was proposed to the council or by one of the council members in 2014, and uh, a motion was made to allow chickens under, you know, certain parameters, and it died for lack of a second, and that was the end of that. So uh, that was the last piece of time it was in the model. As far as this one, if I understand the process right, we can discuss if we can have something that we're in some of the agreement on, some verbiage for June, and then have readings at June, July, and August with action taken in August. Is the process. We just go through it. Some people are going to be potentially upset. You know, chickens are I think better than dogs in terms of uh, nuisance as far as noise and things like that. Dogs are welcome too. So. Before I forget, I want to read Skyler's. Skyler, not here tonight, obviously, but he's, he knew about the, uh, this item and he's a little passionate about it, so he sent a uh, statement he'd like to have read, read into the record, I guess. Living in small town rural Nebraska, our community appreciates farming, ranching, and self-sufficiency. I believe that allowing Ainsworth citizens to raise chickens is perfectly in line with the values of the community. Not only would it be good for the current <coughs> citizens, of which several already have chickens, but I believe it could be a draw to our community for people of similar values. Assuming they are not a nuisance to neighbors and are not detrimental to the environment, I believe we should allow the raising of fowl in parentheses, chickens, ducks, and peacocks included, within the city limits. I would propose a limit of 30 birds per household. The birds would still be subject to nuisance, abates, ordinance, and noise complaints. More than 30 birds allowed only with approval of the city council and written consent from neighbors. So that's uh, Skyler's position. Uh, <laughs> so quick on, I have recently gotten into the chicken game outside of city limits, of course. Uh, and it can get addicting. I'm up to 30 birds myself, and that is far too many to have. <laughs> so I, I would like to be on the record today stating that that is way too many. <laughs> I've been around a few peacocks, and I think they're worse than a barking dog, or is it similar to a barking dog? Is it, is it both males and females do that? I fetch noise or just the male? <laughs> I have no idea. I get one once with my pickup. But that's just all I know about pickup. You know, I I've, I've been fighting on this and I'm thinking about, you know, I'm sure I'm the one that kind of brought this to attention and probably pushed the issue to my myself, but um, you know, someplace around I'm thinking around the number eight, um, eight poultry, you know, whether you have a combination of Four chickens, four ducks, six chickens, two ducks, um, no geese, uh, no roosters, make it limited to that. I would like to see somehow they would have to register with the city of Ainsworth on, on that so we know where they're at. Um, a fee, you know, waive the fee. I mean, I don't, I don't, we don't need to be putting fees on this, but I, you know, I'm not against at all having do you want to license your chickens? Do you want to have a little, no, we like we can, can we do that with cats and dogs yeah. in, in January? Do you want to get a little why tag should, and license for your chicken? As a citizen, why should I have to license and pay for my dog if you don't have to, your whole I know. I no, and I'm not, I I'm not saying to, individually license yeah. each chicken, but as I agree, I a resident, comparable you license to your resident. Whatever the dog fee is, have it be comparable that, hey, we, we've got the, the chicken license. Uh, I was kind of thinking in that six range, if we, we could potentially put in, you know, not within 15 feet of a neighboring property. It's like it's 50 by 150, kind of a standard lot size. That would leave 20 feet in the middle to where they could have their coop and uh, still be away from the neighboring properties. And, uh, not be right out to where they're getting, where they're not into the 
So if you if you do have this and you have eight or whatever in the property line, who's going to enforce it? The chicken cops. You know, if if nobody's going to enforce it, just throw the whole ordinance out. Let everybody have as many chickens as they want. It's not going to be enforced. You know, these ordinances. That's the deal. These ordinances need to be enforced if we're going to have them. Same money with all this one. If, uh, we can put all the ordinances in we want. If they're not going to be enforced, what's the good for the ordinance? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of ordinances in that book that don't. Uh, that's exciting. Can I say something though? If you're only going to do the 15 feet though, I live over on 7th Avenue, and there's no way that's feasible for anybody over there if they were to. I don't know chicken by any means, but if there's someone over there in that neighborhood wanted to do that, there was there's no way that's feasible. They just lost. just want to throw yeah, out. Lost, what are they? Um, I have a fenced in backyard. Um, not sure what size, but I live here, and then I have another neighbor right here, and here's my fence. I mean, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there that not a lot of the lots on 7th Avenue in that area are feasible for that. And I honestly don't care. I live in the country with my sister and I had a neighbor that had chickens and that was the most annoying and biggest pain in the butt to go over to her house. And just so annoying to listen to them. Where would you say that? I'm a, I'm a With them sitting there? I am outside of the city. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems fine. I took the dog for a yeah. walk yesterday, and then third and fine, we had my dog, and Jesse's dog, and Lenny's dogs, and the Johnson's dog. Every dog on the block, I don't know if we just got in on it, but they were all going. And I was not near what my 30 birds are in, in a smaller space. But I think what? any animal you're going to have. Being an novice in this, what is the, what am I trying to say? Why do people want chickens? Eggs. Okay. Now, being a town boy, chickens are going to lay eggs regardless of if there's a rooster around. Okay. I had no idea. I, Four fifty. I mean, so, 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 if cow, cows make milk without being, they just Sorry. automatically make milk, and chickens automatically well, make milk. Well, no, cows are a little different. Okay, I don't know. I, I grew up in town. I have no idea. a calf to yeah. freshen up. Your well, okay. If you milk them every day, well, they eventually will die. Yeah, but, <laughs> okay, go for it. So, yeah, they'd, they'd be Chicken, chickens cows lay eggs regardless. Chickens just... They just do. Okay. The rooster fertilizes the eggs. They're not I understand that. Get, uh, They're not fertilized get without a rooster. I understand that. Unfertilized eggs. Right. I didn't know that until a few years ago either. Okay. <laughs> Biology. 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 Hey, I, I, I've, I've, got, three or four I've got a friend that he's gone now, but he was a farmer and rancher. And some of the stuff he told me, boy, I was hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> and I was just buying all of it. Yeah, so I learned you know, you know, you want to. There's a gap as far as the 20 to 30 chickens, you know, who's going to um, eat that many eggs throughout the throughout their week or whatever, how, how, how often the chicken lays an egg. But, so we definitely want to avoid... We don't want, to, we don't uh, want the residents in here starting to sell eggs. That's a <coughs> zoning problem. Yeah, that, that goes to be kind of a zoning problem then. You're better off raising night crawlers. Because according to the sign at Long Pine Lumber, a dozen night crawlers is more expensive. Costs more than it does in eggs. Every every yard happens. When I was reading through the old minutes, I did most of the complaints that appeared from the audience at that meeting related to uh, oh, there were concerns about disease, botulism, or whatever. From the that, that would sound like the primary complaints eight years ago. Uh, I don't remember reading anything about the bodies, but. I think that's all the right idea to bring it up. Did start getting input from folks? Yeah, because you're through the reading, you have three options. Would you like to have a 
an ordinance for the, to consider at the June meeting? Is that what you're thinking? I think timeline, <coughs> that's as far as the timing on our, uh, that ordinance book and we're paying that company to go through it and get a nice fresh copy. We should probably just have it ready for that. Because that, if I read through that book, August is kind of when they want that finalized, right? So I would say if we could have something for June and read in June, July, and August, and potential action taken for August. How should we come up with a, a draft? Or a, do, you, do, you want, do you have an idea on the lead there? Or do you want Lisa and me to figure something out? I can work with you. Maybe wait till after graduation for the <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine some other communities have similar ordinances. Yeah. You can uh, I, I to borrow from a small, like a pretty convoluted one based off lot of size and this and that. And you can, I think, up to 30 in some of those positions, yeah. which I think we should be fairly standard. Yeah. 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 So to go out with a measuring tape as well as, I think so. You know, okay, they have X amount of chickens per square feet. I think the store is fast. I think we can find something reasonable. So you're going to put in there how to handle the disposal after avian flu sweeps through the community? Well, that's kind of more how to handle this. I think. Well, Jay, tell you. Hopefully, we don't get one of the back there flocks up to 1.7 million. <laughs> yeah. Are you thinking then six when you're looking to craft the ordinance? Is that kind of what the number you're settling yeah, that on? Seems reasonable. You get probably so about four eggs. Can you pull the current people that already have backyard flocks in town and see how many, how many chickens? Hypothetically, <laughs> see how many they might be inclined to keep. If you were going to have chickens, how many would you have? <laughs> I do remember back in '14, the, the comment was made: if you want to find out who has chickens in town. Just ask the uh, guys that ride the garbage truck. Because yeah. they're up and down every alley anyway. All I remember is talking to Jeff Konkoleski, God rest his soul, and I don't know if he was against chickens or what, but apparently somebody pranked him and one night he came home and there was a rooster in his garage. <laughs> but he was laughing about it at the time. I do remember that. Any other comments from the media? Our guests here? Or? Do we need more discussion? Or everybody good? We got a plan? All right, cool. And I guess I just make a comment again. Once again, if, if you have any council, if anybody has any issues or any comments, please get a hold of your city council and so so we can put something together. It's the best way for us to learn what you got, what the community wants. Yeah, well, um, I think we'll move on to the city administrator and clerk treasurer report. Okay. So, just a lot of uh, still DOT project progress, you know, we're thinking to do, of course, what's going on with the and still a lot of planning work that we're doing. Listens a couple of times to come up with some design standard options that we can present to the public regarding the downtown. I think we're hoping for uh, some kind of final options to be presented in the July. Um, so that will be coming soon. Park board met. This, we were discussing a lot of potential projects out at the park and we're trying to gather members so we kind of know what those things could cost um, before they kind of determine their priorities. So they're, they're actively working on that. We did a community cleanup day in April. Uh, didn't have a ton of people participating, but we did do some tree limb pickup and picked up some tires uh, to one side of the tire in the state that Peter Solid Waste was putting on. Linda volunteered her time uh, Friday at the tire in the state. I think they had a good turnout there. They were just under their 210 quarter, so that's a lot of tires. So it's good for the town. Um, we did some updates to our cybersecurity on our skater at the water department. And we did get a lien on arms safety limit of $500 that contributed to that. I think the total cost was $1,800. So that was helpful. And 
and then, you know, Arbor reporting has started. That was a deal that we got done. Yeah, I was going to ask what one of the things at the park for you. We had two of the students that you know that they went and talked to the government class and talked about their projects. Um, a couple of students came in and pitched their uh, dog park plan. See that? Yeah, the school park. Because that was pretty cool. It was a real good idea. We'll follow up on that. Will that include a chicken park? I don't know why chickens couldn't run around the dog park, although. Hey, what are your what are what are the guidelines of the dog park? Because we could go on a fishing pond here. I mean, that's going to have some space around it. So we talked about that area. I, it's just you know discussion now, but mm -hmm. yeah, could make a nice area. Um, Rob would like to visit with us briefly about potential legal matters if somebody would like. Going to I think the motion going into executive session concerning legal matters. Okay. Motion is second. Call the roll. Sean. Yes. Motion carried. We'll enter executive session at 6.31. I don't anticipate any action out of this. Sure. Okay. If I'm wrong, I can let you guys know. Thanks. I'll try to tell you. I was going to say, why don't you try to get actually get a phone to work?